In the same way, we are transmitting information. There's the matrix holographic internet, and then there's also the other internet, the alternative internet, which is us transmitting from the DNA to each other. This is one way that we come up with this thing about telepathy, where someone thinks something and someone next to them says, I was just thinking that there has been a connection, a broadcast and a receiving, and therefore the same thought appears to both people. The hundredth monkey syndrome, where they found that once a, a number, certain number of a species has learned something new, suddenly many uh, all or a vast number of that species can suddenly do whatever the few have been taught or learned spontaneously without being taught. They just know how to do it. How do they do that? Because those that have understood or learned something new, they transmit that knowledge. They don't know they're doing it, but they're transmitting it all the time because we're transmitter receivers. Other members of that species pick it up. If it's a, a monkey, the elephant doesn't pick it up. Other monkeys in the same species pick it up. Why? Because they're operating on the same wavelength of that species, the same DNA code transmitter receiver frequency. Therefore, that species picks up the new knowledge and not another species that is operating on a slightly different frequency. And that is why when people start to change their frequency by beginning to wake up, they start to lock into the frequency on which this knowledge is being transmitted by people who are already aware of it and learning about it and waking up to understand it. And suddenly they start to get the knowledge of what's going on spontaneously. They don't have to um, you know, read a book or anything. They just know it because they're now starting to pick it up. And this is why we are in a wonderful time at this, this, uh, this point that we're experiencing because the hundredth monkey syndrome within the human species is beginning to kick in and people are starting to spontaneously pick it up and tune into it. And that's what the microchip is really about, to suppress this uh, process that I'm talking about, to shut us down from waking up and to shut others down from waking up as a result of this alternative internet and collective reality that we're talking about. Now, the 95% of DNA, they call junk DNA, kind of funnily enough re relates to about the 90 odd percent of reality that people, uh, scientists say exists that we cannot perceive. And the real, uh, the real meaning of this other junk DNA is that that connects us to other levels of reality, connects us out into these other realms, these multidimensional realms. We're supposed to be multidimensional beings. We're supposed to be able to connect and perceive multidimensional reality, just as when the consciousness leaves the body in a near-death experience, they say, I just had this unbelievably massive expansion of consciousness. I just could see and perceive everything. Yes, this is here to shut that down. It doesn't have to be, but that's the way it's been, what it's manipulated to do. And it's cutting us off from this 95% of DNA or in awareness that holds us in the fractional part of DNA that relates to this perception. This is why people say, you know, we only use a tiny fraction of our brains. Well, we only use them in relation to this reality. The brain is a multidimensional uh, computer that is, is, is possible to perceive infinite kind of realities, but that we shut off from that by the manipulation of many other things. And therefore we say, we only use part of our brains. No, we only perceive that part of the brain and perceive that we use that part of the brain that relates to this reality, because that's where we're seeing it from. We are incredible. This is incredible. It's a fraction of, we use it as a fraction of what's possible. What is reality? Whatever we believe it is. I saw this once. Where there is love, there is pain. Balls. No, no, no. Where there is love, there is pain. If you believe where there is love, there is pain. That's all it is. 
What we believe is what we experience. They want you to believe that where there is love, there is pain, because if you believe that, where you find love, you will have pain, and you'll relate love, oh, it's so painful, love. Oh, I don't like that very much. There is no spoon. What was that, that line by that child in the Matrix? Um, it's not the spoon that bends, it is only yourself. Yes, because it's only this here. The spoon's in your bloody head. Therefore, we perceive it bends, the spoon don't actually bend because there is no freaking spoon except as a decoded energy field in our head uh, that takes a holographic form. All these things, it's a miracle. No, it's not a miracle. It is the natural process of infinite possibility. You perceive it is a miracle because you are perceiving from the point of sense of constant total limitation. Therefore, anything that happens beyond your sense of limitation becomes a miracle. Not a miracle. How can you run through fire and not get burned just because you've programmed your mind not to perceive that you're going to get burned? Because an illusion can only burn an illusion if you believe it can. Otherwise, it can't believe something else on a deep level and it will not um, unfold because we are consciousness. It's the vibrating field that we decoded in our heads to be a holographic, apparently physical body. How can it be harmed or be burned? Except if we believe that is the way it works. It's all belief, all perception. William Blake said, if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. Exactly. And if we reach that point where we cleanse the doors of perception and we remove the implanted limitation and sense of who we are, then we are not, I think, therefore I am. We are not even, I compute, therefore I am. We, I am, therefore I am. We just are, everything just is. This is the freedom of limitless perception that this whole global conspiracy is designed to shut us out from, to deny the perception of so that we operate within the frequency and belief system that allows the few to control the many. When we realize there are no many, but just one infinite I controlling that becomes a nightmare. And this thing of the body and this reality can be broken down to pure mathematics because it is a mathematical construct on one level. It can be broken down to numbers. This is why we get kind of numerology and how these sequences of numbers, and this is why the, new, the, the Illuminati play with numbers, like I've mentioned briefly, uh, but it, there's the enormous detail to go with that on another occasion. The, the DNA, it all breaks down, everything breaks down into numbers on one level, um, and, and, and the, the codes and the frequency fields that it works with. Again, the DNA can be broken down in, in numbers, A, C, G, and T, as they call them. Uh, they're the matrix numbers. And in these ancient, ancient uh, constructions where they're so fantastic in their mathematical construction, where the same patterns, the same lengths, the same appear all over the world in these incredible ancient structures going back thousands of years and the, the archaeologists go, oh, well, they're all the same. I wonder why. The, they knew about this uh, pie and this golden mean and all this other stuff. And these over here also knew about it. Why did they do that? Because, did, did they go traveling? No. It was the ancient knowledge when we had a global advanced society that filtered down through this now uh, uh, disunited global society. But it was the same knowledge and they built in the same way because they had the same mathematical knowledge uh, and, and they understood the nature of architecture and how you can manipulate energy fields and, and how you can um, 
create different realities by by using numbers and and, and, and and all this stuff. And this is why the Illuminati to this day construct their major cities and focal points with these street plans that I was talking about earlier. Because they've retained through the secret society network at the highest level, this knowledge, this understanding of how you can use numbers and mathematical patterns to manipulate energy fields and therefore manipulate people who live in those energy fields. Going back uh, to the ancient structures like Stonehenge, they weren't put in that place in that way by accident, but because they had this ancient knowledge passed down. This guy, uh, Leonardo Pisano Fibonacci, he was Italian. Um, he came a walk well, centuries ago. He came up with what's become known as the Fibonacci sequence, which basically is, well, more than basically it is. You add the two previous numbers to get the next one. So it's naught and one. One and one equals two. Two and three equals five. And this Fibonacci sequence is found all over na nature in the way that plants grow, in the way that shells form, in the features and distances between them in the human face because everything in the end can be broken down to mathematics because this is a mathematical construct, this matrix that we are perceiving as reality. Uh, this guy, Stephen Marquardt, an American doctor who really went into the Fibonacci uh, stuff in relation to the human body, he said, all life is biology, all bi biology is physiology, all physiology is chemistry, all chemistry is physics, all physics is math, or maths as we call it in, in Britain. And he might have added, and all math is energy. So if you understand, because you've had the knowledge passed through and you've added to it, um, the, the mathematical nature, then this is why the Illuminati are obsessed, as so many researchers have established, with number sequences, with doing something on certain days, in certain months, at certain times, which have certain number sequences. They're manipulating the matrix to suit their ends. The other thing is that a biological computer, and they're, they're developing uh, these around the world. I know there's a project in, uh, in Florida, at the University of Florida, developing biological computers which can uh, think to a certain level themselves.